Hello. That's a bit better. Reminds me how much I absolutely love float fishing on the river. Well, I'm out fishing again today, and this video is gonna be all about how to float fish on rivers. There's a few differences between float fishing on a lake and on flowing water. We're gonna cover that, as well as bait choice, rigs, and the actual process of catching loads of fish on the float when you're river fishing. The spot that I'm fishing today is a perfect float fishing swim. It's got an even depth, which means the float can run down and the bait won't be dragging the bottom. It's got a couple of overhanging trees, which look ideal to hold some fish underneath. And the speed of the current is perfect too. If you're fishing somewhere which is very shallow and the water is ripping past, it can be hard to control the float and the bait can sort of whiz past the fish a little bit too quickly. Here though, it's absolutely ideal. I also know it's a good float fishing peg because when I bought my day ticket from Woody's Angling Centre in Hereford, he said that this swim had done quite a lot of fish in the competition the other day. I definitely recommend if you're coming up to the Y, get your day ticket from Woody's Angling Centre because he does know the river incredibly well. So I think it's about time we get fishing. Now, if I was fishing on a lake, I'd find the depth by attaching a plummet to the hook, casting it out and seeing if the float pulled under. But on a river that's slightly more difficult, using a plummet doesn't work so well because you've got the current to contend with. So what I do is I guess the depth, flick the float out, and I'll watch that float running down in the current. If the float stays on the surface, like it is now, I've got no bait on, so I'm not gonna get bites. If the float stays like that, then I'm set too shallow. So what I'll do is I'll reel it in and make it a little bit deeper. And I'll keep making it gradually deeper until the float actually drags under. So I've made it quite deep now. I've cast it in and yeah, see that time the float has just dragged just beneath the surface. That means that the split shot or my hook is bumping along the bottom and getting caught on it. It's important to do this without a bait on because if I did have some maggots on the hook, the float would be dragging under constantly. So what's happened that time is the floats dragged under because the split shot have touched the bottom. So I need to make it just that little bit shallower to bring the bait up off the bottom ever so slightly. Now I know that I'm fishing pretty much the same depth as the river, but not so deep that my bait or hook is gonna keep getting snagged. Yep, fish. There's one. Nice chub that. Well, that's a good start. I've caught myself a chub. Beautiful little fish. Float fishing is a method of angling that revolves around the use of a float, or bobber as they're sometimes called, I think in America. A float is basically a buoyant piece of plastic or wood, and sometimes a feather or quill that sits on the surface of the water and gives you a way of indicating you know, when a fish takes the bait. On lakes, I will normally waggle a fish and catch species like perch, roach, bream, and sometimes carp. But when it comes to river fishing, I absolutely love float fishing, especially if I'm able to sort of stand out in the water, be amongst the fish, be running bait through, loose feeding regularly, and building you know, a good weight of silverfish. Float fishing on rivers tends to lend itself to species like chub, dace, bleak, but it can be equally effective in the right swim for bigger fish like barbel, or and even in slower water, maybe tench or something. When I'm going on a river session, I've kind of got a decision to make. Do I fish float or do I fish feeder? Of course, I always want to fish the float because I think I enjoy it more, it's more active, keeps me focused, and it's just a method of fishing that I really love. In certain situations, one will perform a lot better than the other in terms of the fish that you catch. Let's say you've got one big snag on the far side of the of the river and there's a deep hole underneath it and basically the fish live under there you're probably best off chucking a ledger or a feeder to the spot where those fish are and anchoring your bait there and leaving it there 
However, if you've got a swim like what we've got today, which has got 15 or 20 meters of water, which has got fish all up and down it, and a similar sort of depth running all the way through, the float is ideal because you can actually cover all that water. You can let your float drift 15 meters down and pick off fish under the rod tip or get bites as the float drifts further down as well. Feeder fishing is definitely more suitable when you're fishing at longer ranges, casting into much deeper water though. Casting a very deep float rig is pretty difficult. And if you've got a really strong current like you sometimes get on big rivers like the Trent or the Severn, float fishing is gonna be difficult. However, the spot we've got today is bang on for a bit of float fishing. For the fishing on the river today, I have brought a couple of rods. This is a 13 foot float rod with a lightweight, quite small reel attached. And the other one is a 12 foot rod. The reason I've brought two is because I wanted to have one rod with a smaller float fishing close in, trying to catch lots of smaller fish like dace and bleak, but then also have a longer rod to use with a bigger float further out to maybe find some better chub. Of course, you don't need multiple setups it's just a convenience that i'm very lucky to have as well as the rods and reels i've got this bait stand bait waiter i think they call it which i can drop my tubs into oh there goes my disgorger it's just fallen to the bottom of the river one moment ah it's so cold the bait waiter is handy because it means i've got my bait easily to hand i've got my disgorger oh, I I did before it fell to the bottom of the river and it just means I can like loose feed, make a cast, it's all very convenient. If I was fishing from the shore and I didn't have to wade out to get closer to the fish then you wouldn't really need this. As well as that I've got a bank stick which I'm just leaving my rod on whilst I uh, unhook fish or put out bait and a landing net and my keep net. The keep net is just there so that I can show you at the end of the day how awesome float fishing can be because hopefully it's going to be rammed full of fish, but we'll see about that. That's the tackle I'm using. Bait wise, I've got maggots, some hemp, some small pellets and some spam. I brought all four because I wanted to have options. Sometimes maggot just gets you loads of little stuff and you've got to put a piece of spam on to uh, find something a little bit bigger. And I've got some pellets as well just because there are a lot of tiny silverfish out there. And if those little fish are just getting all of the bait before it gets down to the bigger fish, pellets are a great way to get down past them and, and find those larger specimens. When you're float fishing on a lake, you've normally cast out, closed your bail arm, you wait for a bite, the float goes under, you just pull and strike. But on a river, of course, you've got your bail arm open and you're letting the float run downstream. Now when you get a bite, all you need to do is put your finger on the spool so that no line can be taken, set the hook and then close the bail arm once you know there's a fish on the end. That way, if you strike and there isn't a fish on, you can then just continue letting it run downstream. You waste time otherwise closing the bail arm, trying to strike, then reopening it and it's easier and quicker if you just close the bail arm once you know there's one on. Oh, there's one. <laughs> you know what, that might be a trout. There it is. That's ridiculous. Wow, man. I, see, I think it's the only trout I've ever caught off of this river. Or at least the only one I caught in a long, a long time. Oh, it's bit me. A trout on spam. That's hilarious.
The other thing that's really important when you're float fishing is slowing the float down. Often, because the surface water moves faster than the water at the bottom of the river, the float will go through and it'll kind of drag your bait through the swim too quickly. The trick is to put your finger on the spool. You've got the bail arm open, but you've got your finger on the spool. Hold the rod out like that and slowly bring the rod downstream following the float. That will enable you to sort of creep the float down the river rather than letting it zoom off down in the current unchecked. Then once you're pointing the rod mostly downstream towards the float, you can just pay off a little bit of line, bring your rod back to the upstream position and begin following the float down again, obviously every now and then, mending the line by lifting it up and laying it down straight again. These things are quite important because if your bait is moving unnaturally and it's moving at the wrong speed compared to the loose feed, you'll struggle to get bites. But if you get it just right, well, you'll, you'll really notice because you'll start catching quite a few fish. When you go in a tackle shop and look at the floats available, it can be absolutely baffling to know which float you need for which situation. So there's four that I like to use on rivers most of the time. The first is a stick float, a very simple looking float, very much like a stick, a small, delicate uh, tip, not very visible at long range. So this is the sort of thing you're gonna use quite close in, uh, off the rod tip, not very good for casting, far out, doesn't take very much weight, but great if you're fishing for shy biting sensitive fish like roach or potentially dace. If you're fishing a bit further out and letting that float run down further, especially if the current's quite strong and you're using big baits, this is a loafer or chubber float full of air so it's very buoyant. This is the perfect float for using large baits like bread, spam, and uh, fishing for fish that aren't too shy when they take the bait. So barbel, chub, that sort of thing. Then I've got an actual waggler. This is what you'd normally see when fishing on a lake, but wagglers can be great on rivers too, especially when you need to cast further to maybe fish the far side of a river. If you're fishing with one of these, you might lock it with a couple of split shot, but then also have some shot that you drag along the bottom and that enables you to work your bait through the swim relatively slowly. Finally, I've got uh, an Avon or Bolo float. There's differences between those two styles, but in general, you're looking at a wire stemmed float with a large visible tip, so you can see it floating all the way downstream. And because it's quite thick in the middle and holds a few shot, it stays quite steady in the current. This means it's good when you've got quite a lot of flow or a fair bit of depth. Um, and if the flow is sort of pulling the float round or the wind is coming across, you can still mend the line against this without it sort of drifting out of place too badly. Oh, hello, hello. That's a bit better. Ah, oh, reminds me how much I absolutely love float fishing on the river. So what is it that I like so much about this style of fishing? Well, it's active. I'm always focused. I'm either casting, checking the, the line, uh, striking into fish, loose feeding. It's, it's a busy day's fishing and it keeps, me, uh, it keeps me active and on my toes. If you wanted to go and have a very relaxing session, maybe you're quite tired after a long week at work, potentially chucking a couple of feeders out and sitting behind your quiver tips is a better option. However, if you're like me and you wanna focus on your angling, you wanna build a good weight of fish and you want to get the most from your peg, Float fishing is quite often the best way to do that. Of course, there are certain things that make river float fishing 
more difficult than when you're doing it on a lake. The addition of the flow certainly complicates things. You've got to think about how quickly is my bait sinking? Am I, have I got the right depth? Uh, is that little bite that I'm getting a fish or is that my bait just touching some weeds on the bottom? As well as that, you've got to keep your float control and float control is one of those things that you just get better with, with practice. You'll never turn up and do your first, your first ever river float fishing session and, and nail it. There's certainly things to learn and in time you'll get used to how to get that float running down at the right speed and uh, how to hook up with you know, more fish. Oh, there's another one. It's hotting up. <laughs> oh, hello. That's going to be a nicer chub, this one. Yeah, that, that's decent. Oh, there's nothing better than being stood in the, in the river, battling a beautiful, wild chub. Yes! Now that's a proper chub. A little bit bigger. I'm actually struggling to hold it still because I'm shivering so much. A week or two ago, it felt like midsummer. It was 25 degrees and beautiful. Now I'm very underdressed. It's uh, September and I'm freezing, but I'm catching chub, so I'm happy. Every float rig revolves around the same concept. A float, which sits up on the surface, gives you bite indication. Some split shot, which pulls your bait down to the depth that you want it. And then of course, a hook on the end. That bit is very important. But today I set up two separate rods for two slightly different styles of float fishing. The first one, I got a stick float at the end and then four number fours spread evenly down the line. These are quite small split shot. They don't pull the bait down quickly and I've spread them out so that the bait just flutters down through the water ever so naturally. On the end, I think it's a size 16 or 14 hook baited with a couple of maggots. This is my catch all sorts of little stuff close in, not really too fussy about what I catch with that rod. However, if I want to go out a bit further, fish towards the um, overhanging trees and in the slightly deeper water, I've got a more positive setup. By positive, I mean I've put thicker, stronger line on. I think this is six pound main line. The other rod I'm only fishing with four. I've put a larger float on. This one takes a lot more split shot. I've bulked all my shot together. That's four AAA shot in a group. I've bulked the shot together because it pulls the bait down to the bottom quicker than stringing them out like on the other rod. Beneath that, I actually use a little trick. This is something that a friend of mine showed me the other day. He said, put a little heli swivel, one of these guru heli swivels, instead of doing a loop to loop. And I didn't think it was that cool at the time. I thought, what's the point? But I've since found it's really neat because I can loop on and loop off different hook links. What this means is I can set up a rig like this, which is actually a hair rigged bit of fake spam. But I can also take other hook links um, with bigger or smaller hooks for different baits and I can just loop them on and off of that swivel. The other thing about swivel is if you've got quite a big bait and it's spinning in the water as you retrieve, the swivel stops your line from becoming really twisted as the swivel can rotate naturally. This hair rigged bit of fake spam is actually something that I haven't really used much in the past either. I only picked that up because Woody in the tackle shop said that there's a lot of small chub around and they will steal your bait very quickly. So today using a little bit of fake spam on the hair has meant that I've caught all of those reasonable chub today all on the same bit of meat like i've used the same bit of plastic spam all through the day it's really cool stuff actually and it's meant that i've saved a lot of time rebaiting so that's the light setup that's the heavier one both have done fish and uh, i hope that gives you an understanding of the float fishing setup now that is an amazing netful of chublets dace a uh, few bleak and one or two really decent chub as well. Uh, hopefully this video helped you a little bit with your float fishing. We're gonna head off now because it's just started raining. That's pretty good timing actually. <laughs>